Hello friends, today I am presenting some of the developmental alterations of teeth. Developmental defects of teeth are classified based on the number, shape, size and structure. Based on the number, the developmental defect can be total anodontia, oligodontia or supernumerary teeth. Similarly based on shape, we have gemination, concretions, dilaceration, talon, cusp, dense indenti, dense evasinatus, taurodontism, or supernumerators. Similarly, uh, either microdontia or macrodontia may be present based on the size of the tooth. And on the basis of the structure, amylogenesis imperfecta, dentinogenesis imperfecta, regional odontodysplasia, or environmental enamel hypoplasia can be present. Let's start with the developmental defects based on the number. Anodontia. N without the root word N means without an odontous teeth. In anodontia, all teeth are missing congenitally, as we can see in the first figure. Similarly, oligos is pew or hypodontia. Hypo means less, as in hypotension means less blood pressure, reduced blood pressure. Hypodontia, most of the teeth are missing. Generally, more than 30% teeth are missing. We can see in the second picture there. Similarly, supernumerary teeth. It is presence of one or more extra teeth. Generally, we have we do have uh, put 32 numbers of permanent teeth, and supernumerary teeth uh, can be present mostly in the maxillary incisor region. As we can see in the first picture, there is uh, between the two maxillary central incisors, there is a major dense, that is a small tit. And uh, this is followed by maxillary fourth molars and mandibular fourth molars can also be present as supernumerary tit. And in the lower picture, we can see that there are two premolars in, on the bilaterally present and these are lingually placed in the premolar region. Four different morphological types of supernumerary teeth have been described. They are conical, tuberculate, supplemental, and odontomy. Now, best and shape. Gemination. A single enlarged tooth or joint tooth in which the tooth count is normal when anomalous tooth is counted as one. Usually, a common root and the common root canal is present. In this figure too, the maxillary central incisor is nosed as if it is going to it is trying to divide into two but when we count this, the both tooths is one the number is total tooth count is normal fusion a single enlarged tooth or joint tooth in which the tooth count reveals a missing tooth when the anomalous tooth is counted as one and two normally separated tooth boards are joined and in the fusion there is confluence of dentin unlike in concretions where the only the cementum of two tooth meets meet with each other in this picture we can see that mandibular lateral incisor and the mandibular canine they have fused and when we count those two teeth as one there it is revealed that some tooth is missing concretions union of two adjacent tooth only in the level of cementum not going deeper to that without the confluence of the underlying dentin and unlike fusion and gemination concretions may be developmental or post inflammatory another developmental defect based on the shape it is dilaceration. It is an abnormal angulation or bent in the root or less frequently the crown of a tooth, as you can see in the second picture here. And dilaceration may be idiopathic or due to traumatic injury that displaces the calcified portion of the tooth jump. Now we can see in the figure the molar, it has the abnormally angulated or bent root in the apical part of the root and the, the bending has begun 
in the C is a reason in the second picture. Talon's cusp, a well delineated additional cusp that is located on the surface of an anterior tooth and extends at least half the distance from the cemento enamel junction to the incisal edge. It is the talon's cusp. In the figure, we can see that the maxillary lateral, that is right maxillary lateral, it is having a talon's cusp. We can appreciate that. And talons cusp are mostly seen in permanent maxillary lateral incisors, followed by maxillary central incisors, and sometimes they can be seen on mandibular tooth, mandibular anteriors, and premolars too. Dense indenti, a deep surface invagination of the crown or root that is lined by enamel. It is called dense indenti. And the teeth affected most often include the permanent lateral incisors followed by central incisors, premolars, canines, and molars. Dense evaginatus, as the name suggests, the cusp like early vision, evaginated area of enamel located in the central group or lingual region of the buccal cusp of premolar or molar teeth. And it typically occurs on premolars is usually bilateral and demonstrates a marked mandibular predominance. Taurodontism. Taurus means what? Bull. Bull-like teeth. An enlargement of the body and pulp chamber of a multi tooth with apical displacement of the pulpal floor and bifurcation of the roots. It is called taurodontism. And based on the severity, as you can see in the fic mm, picture there, it is classified into mild, moderate, and severe, uh, respectively called as hypotaurodontism, mesotaurodontism, and hypertaurodontism, according to the degree of apical displacement of the pulpal floor. Supernumerary roots, an increased number of roots on a tooth compared with that classically described in dental anatomy. And as we can see in the figure, this mandibular first molar has an additional root. Normally, it should have one mesial root and one distal root. But here, here is another root coming small from the lateral aspect too, in the buccal side. And the supernumerary roots are most frequently affected teeth are the permanent molars, especially third molars from either arc and mandibular cuspids and premolars. Now coming to the developmental defects based on the size of the teeth, it can be either micro or macrodontia. Uh, let's begin with microdontia. Micro means small. Teeth are physically small than the normal, but uh, it should be well noted that whether the teeth are really small or they appear small due to the jaw enlargement. That should be ruled out. Diffuse two microdontia is uncommon but may occur as an isolated finding in various syndromes like Down syndrome, in pituitary dwarfism, and in association with a small number of rare hereditary disorders that exhibit multiple abnormalities of the dentition. In the second picture here, we can see that maxillary lateral is abnormally small. That is a case of isolated microdontia. In the upper picture, there is diffused microdontia. That is, all the teeth of the arc are small. Macrodontia. Teeth are physically larger than usual and should not include normal sized teeth crowded within a small jaw. Here also the same thing. Whether it is relative macrodontia or absolute macrodontia, that should be ruled out. Sometimes the teeth appear large because some people have smaller jaws due to the underdeveloped jaws. And diffuse microdontia has been associated with uh, pituitary gigantism, autodental syndrome, uh, XYY males, and pineal hyperplasia with hyperinsulinism. The, in the picture, we can see that the maxillary central incisors are abnormally lost. Now, based on the structure of the tooth, 
we have amylogenesis imperfecta, dentinogenesis imperfecta, and mm, environmental enamel hypoplasia, etc. And you know, it is the uh, amylogenesis imperfecta is the imperfect development of enamel, a complicated group of conditions that demonstrate developmental alterations in the structure of enamel in the absence of a systemic disorder. And pinpoint depressions, uh, as we can see in the first figure, these are the clinical ma manifestations of the amylogenesis imperfecta. A similar developmental defect, the dentinogenesis imperfecta, is a hereditary developmental disturbance of the dentin in the absence of any systemic disorder. And a blue to brown discoloration, often with a distinctive translucence, can be seen in dentinogenesis imperfecta. Thank you for watching this video. You can share and subscribe for more tutorials and MCQs. You can contact me anytime in the mailing address provided there. Have a good day. Happy learning.